Alright, hey everyone, it's Advanced with Tag Gaming, and what I've got for you right now is one of my optimization PC improvement type videos. I'm an enthusiast, um, I've been gaming for over 20 years, and I've learned to build PCs and configure things like that. And uh, things have changed drastically over the years since Windows 95 came out, and ME, and Windows 7, and all different things, and Windows 10 is kind of been a little bit different as far as the lack of control and disabling and enabling options it's just something that's been a pain but we've come a long ways with multi-core processors and higher end gpus versus what i've had to work with over the years so having some of these things running as running processes in the background have not been as bad as they were before as far as hindering your pc um, for gaming and um, things like what I used to do is being an architect and engineer using CAD design. So over the years, learning to build all these high-end PCs and something like what I have now, um, which would be like an 8700K with a Titan XP on an ASUS Formula Maxis 10 with this Corsair H, I don't even know if it's an H, I know it's a 150i Pro, I think it's their new 360 rad versus some of the other ones I've used before, which are like 240s, is that, um, you know, you, you have all this money spent and all these things to do to overclock the processor to get as much as you can out of it and to overclock the GPU to get as much as you can out of it. Um, so what it is, is that one of the things is that can hinder these hardware overclocking is... The operating system and basically what Windows 10 has done in a new build which is going to be Windows 10 build 1803 has put in a new power scheme option versus what they had before the only problem is is the options hidden if you were to look for it you wouldn't see it's there you would have had to do something like what I did which find a YouTube video or a link where it says this is a new option out and go in and actually make it visible to turn it on. And what I'm doing is there's a lot of you that are PC gamers playing Battlefield, PUBG, Fortnite, and probably don't even really pay attention to a lot of the little minuscule details about what might be perfect affecting your PC and the performance issues. Um, so somebody like myself that has years of gaming and years of experience, um, that looks for these things can kind of relate better to them than somebody has no clue that they're there. And so when I see these things, I will bring them up every now and then and let you guys know. And this, this is a basic, really easy thing to do to enable, even if you're a you know, novice user of PCs, and to help reduce micro latency because of Windows 10 controlling power policies within your system basically if you don't want to go into any more detail don't want to see any benchmarks I'll put a link in the description you can just click on that come to this website right here this is one of the few I found or actually I found quite a few but not all of them really explain how to do it or why it does it they just say ultimate mode new they don't even tell you what it does and um so yeah basically a lot of people just see ultimate mode and just want to turn it on and not even know what it is it's just ultimate mode but what i'm going to do is i'm going to do this right here so basically we're going to go into our power options and you're going to see right here here's ultimate performance now if you got a gaming pc why would you want to have it on balanced i mean maybe a laptop to help conserve power but if you're plugged into the wall then why bother normally i've had this on high performance um, do I really see a difference between balanced and high performance and benchmarks or anything? I don't, to tell you the truth. Um, but a lot of things with PCs or hardware is that you're not going to be able to tell the difference because it's so small. But is it an improvement that will help? Yes. Um, especially when you start doing a lot of improvements. Um, they'll add up and then that might still be something you really won't be able to see in general but it, it would help with your gameplay it'll help 
achieve or maintain that higher FPS, things like that. And um, also help with like um, latencies if you're gaming and your PC is doing processes in the background. Um, where I might not be able to see Norton, Norton running in the background, for example, while I'm gaming. I may not see the difference because of the hardware I have and the configuration to where it's not that noticeable. But if I were to go ahead and do some video editing or encoding and try to play, then I would see the noticeable difference. So that difference is still there. I can't really see it that much. But if I do something extreme like video editing where there's a high demand running on my system, I actually can see it. So basically, even if you can't see that latency issue what's being caused, you still don't want it, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and in the description, click the link or click the command I put down there. You're going to go down here and get your command prompt up and you're going to right click on it and you're going to run it as administrator. Once you run it as administrator, you're going to go into, I've got it saved right here. Paste it. You basically don't even need to paste. You just click on it, right click and it'll drop it in there. Hit enter. Once you do that, you can go into your control panel. There's many ways to get to the option. Hit your power options and you will know, now have ultimate performance mode available to select. Um, I recommend I did this yesterday. After I put it in there, I went back, checked. It was still locked in. But when I rebooted today, it was unbalanced, which normally it's never even unbalanced. It's on at least high performance, which would make sense. That's the best plan I had available at the time. So what I recommend doing sometimes is going in here and changing one of these options from 20 minutes to 30 minutes or 10 to five or never to five hours and things like that and hitting save. And that might actually help lock it in because I did not knew that yesterday. And I know I've had to do that before with the performance mode that I've picked. Now, basically in general, if you look at the different descriptions, like what I have and the reason I'm doing this video, so you don't have to, is that what happens within windows 10 is that the power management has techniques in the background to manage the power consumption of your pc and options and abilities running in the background which like i said causes micro latencies so like i said when you're gaming you don't want any type of latency so putting this mode on will it says eliminate any latencies which is great right this means that your PC when you're gaming will not be producing any micro latencies which could cause you some issues in your gameplay and um, what I want to go into another reason I put this video up is that I really wanted to see if there was a noticeable difference in benchmarks with this enabled versus when I had it not enabled like I had power mode and so I did those benchmarks and I'm not going to cover them all. I'll just go into basically one of them and I'll, I'll show you kind of, you know, how there is no really noticeable difference, but there will be a difference. So you can see right here that I ran. The benchmark quite a few times I don't think they're all saved when I look at it here but we've got May we've got May right here here's May so you're gonna see right here that everything is identical except the ambient room temperature versus May from January is gonna be slightly different trust me I ran with some different profiles to balance out the temperatures and I still didn't see a significant gain um, improvement. So you can see right here, everything's identical on my system, except probably the drivers would be different from January to May. And you can see there's no significant difference. That 1644 versus 1643, that is not a difference. That that's that could be just how it, you know it, it's a tolerable or a tolerance thing. And um. I also tried to see if I could break my record um, 
would turn the fan up and doing it and I could not even with the newer drivers I actually saw a performance decrease so you can see here's my record which puts me in 31st place and you can see pushing my Titan XP which is just the blower style carb no hybrid or water cooling on it with the fan at 100% you can see that I achieved 6,976 I was trying to break 7,000 and you can see I did the same test actually two day earlier and I actually lost a little bit and um, that's probably just a driver issue or it might be just a tiny bit of a thermal issue so but in general basically what I'm talking about that going to different power options did not affect anything for that and basically what I was talking about before is that these latencies and why they call them micro latencies are not going to be really noticeable but they will be helping and for you to be able to go in and just click it on would be a benefit versus having balanced power unless you're on like a laptop and you're trying to conserve power but I'm plugged into the wall so I don't really care alright guys this has been advanced with tag gaming hopefully this is helpful hopefully you know along with some of the overclocking you're doing some of the other tweaks that I put up um, those will help reduce some of the latencies you're seeing um, unfortunately with PUBG I, I think the main issues we need we need fixed there are basically on Bluehole and PUBG Corp I'll see you guys later